All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Poison Touch Advice Hour. My name is Jake. It's December. It's the end of the year. We're having a lovely, lovely time. I'm a famous Grinch, so I'm not really going to talk about Christmas, but I hope y'all are enjoying your holiday seasons much more than I am. And I am joined today by Bobby Knight, a reality TV extraordinaire, a porn star, dare I say, a overall delight. <laughs> um, Bobby, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing great. You know, I had a very productive day despite getting rained on. Uh, I cleaned the bar today. You know, I brought up all the bottles that I need to bring up. I went to the gym. I did some shopping and then the rain came and I got drenched. But aside from that, I, uh, I had a productive, I went and I got, I got my lineup done. Nice. I got some stuff done around the house. You and I must have been working out at the same time because I did a leg day today that I hated. God, leg <laughs> and, day. Uh, I did not go to my bar on my day off. I did yesterday, but I, I'll i probably end up there tonight. Mm. Yeah, it was our, our monthly cleaning day. So I had to, you know, clock in a couple hours, get in the place pretty mm-hmm. again, since everybody loves to make a mess of my bar. <laughs> Um, we are joined here today to get into people's bullshit, but before we do that, I want to know a little bit about yourself. Tell the people, you know, the people that may not know who you are, give, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Bobby Knight. I, um, started out at 18, actually before I was 18, coming out with a fake ID, um, that's when Bobby Knight was born. I was a go-go boy before I was supposed to be. Started doing porn on my 18th birthday. And that was pretty much my main career for a while. Um, this was back when I have porn that's on VHS and DVD. Like, <laughs> I am 38 years old. I started doing it when I turned 18. So I've been doing it for a long time. Um, I stopped doing it uh, way before OnlyFans. It was only studio work. And uh, I stopped doing it and started doing drag. My drag name is Miranda Wrights. Uh, Fina Barbatal and Juju B taught me all about how to do drag, and that was my career for a while. I, I hosted four or five nights a week. I was I was always in drag, and I I love drag. I do, but then once the game show came out, once Drag Race became a big thing, that was just everyone's end goal. And then drag queens just started, and they still do now. Like there's like thirty new drag queens a day. Yeah. So it's not like punk like it was before. It was like rock and roll is cool. If you went somewhere. To a city, there were only like when I started doing drag, one other girl started that year. Damn. It was well, actually two. It was me, Abby Cummings, and Blair Kensington started at the same time. It's not like now where everyone, which good, great, everyone can express themselves, but like just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in Chicago. Just because, did, just because you did doesn't mean you deserve to be on stage. Like it's a whole thing. Behind. Like the way if I didn't look good enough, I couldn't go out. If my makeup wasn't right, I couldn't go out. Yeah. You know, and some people. Like I'm really, I'm really, really good at hosting. You can ask anybody. That's my 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 strong uh, spot is like hosting comedy, all that stuff. So I really enjoyed. Like I'd rather go and host the whole show while everyone does jumps and splits and, and tell my jokes. Like that's what I'd rather do. Amen. And um, yeah. So then when drag when the when the pandaronium hit, we all had to do drag on Twitch, which I forgot about. And um, that was something else. But I got a lot of music videos um, made through Lip Sync, and my friend would like make these videos. And a couple of them went viral. Then once we came out of the pandemic, I went viral again. I was the one who did Adele with the rolling screen saying, I'm right over here. Bang on. Wow. <laughs> so um, then after that, after I went viral that time, I was like, oh, I want to be, I want more of that feeling. And um, drag wasn't paying enough. It wasn't giving it to me. So I went back full force into porn, into sex work. And started traveling everywhere, meeting more people, and one thing led to another, and then I ended up on reality TV. Of course. Speaking of, if you are looking at the screen and you're thinking, where have I seen this man? Where have I seen him? You have seen Bobby on the screens of For the Love of Dilfs. Uh, some may call it mm-hmm. Dilf Island if you're me and a Mario and like to be stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was... It's so funny that everyone called it that because I think that the working title for the show was going to be Himbo Island. Really? And then uh, and then I think that was too close to because they did that MILF one or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's when it changed. I hated the title in the beginning, to be honest. Really? I was like, this is such a fucking mouthful. Like, it's not, I wanted something quick. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, Dilf Island is definitely a little more snappy. Yeah, I wanted something quick, but I get why they did it. So it, did, so it didn't, because that, that show I heard, I didn't watch it. I heard it flopped. Mine did not. So I, exactly. I didn't watch it. 
Yeah, you were great in your show. You were my pick for 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 winning. Um, yeah, I was my I was my pick for winning too. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> but you had a great showing, and literally as uh, so, Mario got me into it, front of the pot of Mario, and we mm-hmm. maybe binged it in like a day. And then I went and I told everybody on Instagram and Discord, I was like, y'all going to get on this fucking show. You got to watch it. Then Amario and I are like, all right, we're waiting for season two so we could do our little podcast and review it. Um, soon, soon. Yeah. So we're just like, we're obsessed with it. I want more. I need more. Yeah. It was one of the craziest. It was like, it was one of those things where I was, I was told I was going to be on and then I didn't hear anything for a couple of weeks. So I found out. So I was in New York for Pride. And it was when Beyonce dropped Break My Soul. And then I also found out I was going to be on. It was like, I got goosebumps again now. It was just like the greatest. So it was just such a cool day and experience. It was the end of a tour that I had been on. I'd gone to, I got 15 cities filming collabs. And New York was the end. And my friend Saint was there. And Saint, they were on Hot House, Saint and Nick. And they're also from Boston. That's one of my best friends. And this is Severity. The three of us are best friends. Oh, nice. And uh, I was in, I was just in New York. And it was just so, I was like, oh. And then I didn't hear anything. <laughs> For like, and so because I had the show didn't film until after my birthday, so middle of August. It was literally, I left two days after my birthday. Wait, hold and, uh, on so one June. sec. Could we, can you like check the, the mic settings for a second? You like, you dropped out real quick. I don't know what happened. Hold on. Like, you sounded really far away, like you were fine, and then it just <laughs> future Jake, cut this out. You, you know how the editing goes. Does it sound good? Does it sound That's nice? way better. Yeah, perfect. The mic, the, the the things was falling out of my ear, so it just gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, I have these big ears. <laughs> listen, listen. I have like big ears with tiny little little ear holes. My my AirPods yeah, are always falling the fuck out. Tiny, little, tiny little ear holes. That's what the people really want to hear when they come to the Poison Touch twice <laughs> hour. It's probably a fetish. Probably somewhere. Anyways, I, I heard, so I found out in June, and then for a good month, I didn't hear anything, and I was like, I don't want to hit them up, and then them be like, he's annoying, we don't want him on the show, <laughs> so I didn't say, and then I was like, do I get ready, do, like, what do I need to do, but, you know, it's like, they're not going to solidify into, like, a closer, and then finally, you know, I found out, like, you know, the dates were on what I needed, and I still didn't believe that I, it was going to be a thing, I was like, I don't believe it until I'm there, Yeah. I was in the Uber on the way, like, it's, nope, not, something's going to happen, gonna work and then uh yeah it was the mansion that we lived that we were living in was wild oh it It looked it it looked it and gorgeous it was gorgeous even when they like messed it all up for that little cleaning challenge i'm not i don't want to listen uh you know the cleaning challenge was what it was i thought there was some rigor rigor morris in, in the judging on that cleaning challenge but maybe Listen, maybe we didn't see the full thing. I, that's that's the only challenge. That's the challenge I won. Yes, and I should have won that challenge because it was the dirtiest room, and everything else was like fun and flirty, and ours was like food. No, yeah, that's the thing. Is like everyone <laughs> I else, picked, I feel like got I off. They got off easy. I picked that. I picked that. Oh, I was like, I'll I'll do the kitchen. I want to do the kitchen because I figured because it's all like like I could just take my arm and kind of wipe it off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it's all like kitchen top stuff. It's, it's not like the pool. What if stuff sinks or goes out or, or the other? Like I was like, if it's here, I can just pull Nate around. Yeah, it's like with, it's, I know we're gonna be tied. You know, I know we're gonna be tied together. Linoleum. I, was like, I can just wipe it all off. But the, he, they, one of the people who uh, who did it, Rich, who messed up the thing, was like smushed the lasagna into the grout. It smelled so bad. I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten lasagna since. Oh my god! Like, every time I smell lasagna, it makes me. And that was one of my favorite foods. But yeah, that was uh, that's why I was like, if I don't win this, and then and then when we win, our our reward compared to like every other reward was like a free was a sticking. We got to lay on the ground and rub each other. Yeah. I was already rubbing every day for free. Like what the? <laughs> that's what got me. I was, I was like, this is really, <laughs> this is really a reward. We could, it couldn't be like a trip to Jamaica or something like that. <laughs> Not even that. I mean, every other thing was like someone came in for the reward, and then the one that I win, no, there was no one. Because no, okay. when they said massages, I fully expected it was going to be we two massage. things, a masseuse coming in, you know, a little couple's mm-hmm. massage kind of moment. Um, so they said, get to work. Get to work, bitch. Here's some oil. Good luck. 
and and I couldn't take my shirt off on the show unless I wore makeup because of my because tattoos. Of the tattoos. Yeah. So they photoshopped my tattoos off for the promo, and then a lot of people were confused by like sometimes because certain ones I would some days I'd leave out mm-hmm. that weren't like copywritten, but none of these technically are because it's a drawing of a drawing. Yeah. But I digress. But they uh, when we had like the massage, I was like, I can't take my shirt off for him to massage me because we didn't have time for me to to make to put makeup on my arm. Yeah. Because I have to derma blend and like let it set, and it's a whole thing. So I was basically like, get into drag to get a massage. <laughs> yeah, I was like, can we go for ice cream or something? For the, like, I was literally, I was like, what if we ordered like had them bring like Sundays and we did like some anything else? Yeah, making Sundays but gonna be was, cute. It was cute. It was fun. I mean, that that's so perfectly that fits perfect for like me. Like that would be the challenge I would have to do and the, the reward I would win. So I thought it was funny. And we got a really cute scene out of it, too. Yeah, it was cute. It was adorable. It was nice. E- yeah. Even if you did have to rub each other down. <laughs> My hope for season two, and I said this when I first watched it, we need, like, some some small daddy representation. I think I think Matt should have been a daddy. Flip the roles, because the way he was running some of these men into the ground, he should have been on the daddy. Which Matt Palmer? Yes. Put, been a daddy. put him on the daddy side. We need we need bottom daddy representation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell me to call him bottom. I'm gonna text him and tell him you call him the bottom daddy. Listen, well first you know first. <laughs> no, hey. <laughs> no, he's the bottom. All right, see, yeah. good. Hey, see, that's good. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, but enough about that because listen, when I tell you there will be time to talk about season two, a retrospective on season hey, one. Season three is still casting. It. I did see that. Uh, we already got a third season, so if anybody wants to be in, it's a great production company. The TV is amazing. So if anybody thinks they can do better than I did, I dare you. <laughs> I keep on telling Mario to get his audition tape in, put that shit in. I'm, I'm waiting. I need my sister to be on there. But um, there that w- would be so good. There will be time for us to to talk about season two, season one, season three. We're gonna get into it. But for now, let's get into everyone's bullshit. We got a couple really delicious questions today and um, a couple weird ones where people just asked uh, <laughs> very simple questions. I know, I know from the name to a couple of weird ones. You know, and before yeah. we start, I, let, let, this is a great time to say we are not experts in, uh, you know, advice, relationships, you know, uh, if you take our advice, that is on you, boo-boo. Uh, we're not therapists. At least I'm not. I don't know about Bobby, but I'm not a therapist. If, if anybody took relationship advice from me, they would they have, they'd be in trouble because I'm no good at it myself. You know, half the time, the advice is break up with him. Uh, it's some, one of my favorite phrases to say on this podcast. But <laughs> but yeah, this is a good time to say we, we this is all entertainment only. If you take our advice, maybe that's on you. We're going to get into this first question. This is from Gluten Free Faggot. Is a sex and love question and they write hello hunks i've been seeing a guy for five months now and i want to switch things up in the bedroom he knows a lot of creative positions however it still remains that i'm first this fucking door oh my god all right <clears throat> it still remains that i'm verse and he's a top we're mostly siding now because my hole's been getting plowed like western avenue in january is it futile to negotiate with a top to bottom or do you think as troy savan said he will bloom just for me you want to take this one first yeah um so i remember when i first was uh exploring being queer and i like i wouldn't bottom and i think that's because the people who i would try to like play with my hole or top weren't didn't know what they were doing and weren't good at it so i think a lot a lot of the time i mean hey some people just don't like it but a a lot of the time i think that people just haven't done it correctly for them or listened to them or communicated. Um, if being in a relationship with somebody who will only top is like a, a definite deal breaker, then obviously tell them that. Be like, mm-hmm. look, I'm verse, I need both, or open up the relationship or something like that. Because if you're not getting fulfilled sexually, you're going to end up cheating or leaving anyway. So like, you know, try to talk to them and see or you know, get toys and, and play with the toy together. And so like, there, there's, there's ways around it if you really like the person, but if what you really want is to plow that person and they're like, 
no friggin' way, uh, never, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Yeah. Even if they only do it once in a while, even if it's like, hey, once a month bottom for me or something. Like yeah. That. I hate planned sex. Oh. I hate planned sex so much. But you know, if if, you, if it helps him to plan, like if he's like, I'll bottom, but you gotta let me know, like, like the day before. <laughs> you know, if that's what yeah. helps him, then that's then that's good for him. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the advice here is definitely it starts with a conversation because you really got to figure out is he open to bottoming ever at all has he just had bad experiences with it like you said um because mm-hmm. I, I feel the same way i feel like a lot of people that i have met that prefer to top most of the reasons have been well it hurt or they didn't have good experiences with it before and then if you can kind of ease them into it and take really take your time mm-hmm. with them take your time I'm talking be real slow don't plow him until he's ready like like you've been getting plowed like western avenue in january you gotta take your time mm-hmm. with him if he's like m- only topping some people are just lazy and they don't want to clean their butt up but, and and trust me you don't you don't want it if they don't want to, if they don't want to maintain it you don't want to be in it unless yeah. you do but, well you know everyone's yeah. everyone's some got people their thing. Are just, some people just don't want to do it they just because it does i mean you know it takes a while sometimes. It does. The whole, that's that. The whole thing. That's why I'm like, if he really needs to plan that much, you know, get him an emodium. Uh, make sure you got a little little metamucil beforehand. Try take take your take your fiber. Take two emodium. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> the pure for men. Whatever. Well, I'm not getting paid to say that. So you you know, <clears throat> whatever brand of fiber you <laughs> like. Um, and yeah, but really, it starts with the conversation because if 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 you talk to him and he's like, no, I'm never bottoming then that kind of yeah. just ends it there. And then the conversation becomes, all right, well, how do we fulfill me? Yeah. You know, and then right. you get no conversation about whether or not you want to open things up or if that's just a full deal breaker for you. And then you got to, you know, I'm going to say it, then you got to break up with him. <laughs> but you know. I know, I know a lot of, a couple, I know couples that are both tops and they just find bottoms to fuck together or, yeah. you know, like, but I never, I've never known a couple, you know, I know a lot of two top couples. I don't know a lot of two bottom couples. I would like to know one. Yeah. I would like to see the girls that are bumping purses uh, together you with, with you know a, a par. I think that sounds like a fun time. They, I, I want to go to a party that they have. <laughs> if, if you're if you're a two bottom <laughs> couple, <laughs> hit me. <laughs> Take an after party in Chicago. I'm sure we'll find a two bottom couple. Oh, probably. <laughs> Walking around, double ended, you know, like twins attached to the butthole. Ass to ass, yeah. Ass that's ass. what I want. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I want. That's what I want to see on that's season two. Drag race runway, ass to ass. They pair them up and make them come out ass to ass. I think that happened, uh, you know, I think someone did something similar to ass to ass in that twin challenge they did in like season five. Oh my God. Somebody that definitely was ass challenge. to ass. That challenge Good was a them. mess. <laughs> they were really just like in them. each other walking. Um, Good for them. But yeah, I think, you know, bar none starts with a conversation and then you know yeah. kind of what path to take from there. But you know, yeah. you, you can't force him into it. If he really doesn't want to do it, you just have to accept it. And then I mean, course correct. Cause it's, a, it'd be, it's the same thing. Sorry. It's just, it's the same thing with anything, like not just bottoming. Like if you're, you know, if you're like, I want to go on vacations every year and the person you're with doesn't want to, you don't, you're not going to, if you want to go travel, you're going to go travel. If you want to plow somebody, you're going to go plow somebody like, don't not, don't not do it. And, and I hate when people are like, Oh, I love him. It's like, do you? <laughs> Well, you know, do you really? It's been five months, girl. <laughs> I've, loved, I've loved a lot of men, and I can love a lot more men. Exactly, too. you can find love in the trees if you really want it. Find love in the trees and the grass and your friends. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, we'll, we'll get into that later. I think there's this question about happiness and, and what that means, and that's a whole thing. Um, I've never experienced it. You know, we're all we're all searching for it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, do I have anything else to say about this one? Um, I don't think so. I think I kind of think we think we hit all the the nails on the head, all the the bottoms and the holes all here. The G spots. Yeah, yeah, I think we got this one. Good luck. Remember, send me an update. This goes for everyone else. If you have sent a question in for this episode or for a previous episode, send me an update so we can read it on the show. I want to hear how everything goes. If you have this conversation and he says, uh, "I'm a top fuck you. I'm never bottoming," and you mm-hmm. uh, you need advice on how to find yourself a, a, a good you know bottom right back in we we can we can address that when it happens but <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen but yeah send us updates we love it let's move on to this next one you want to read this one uh we're on broke broke bitch from socal yep 
That's a great name. I, was, I used to be a broke bitch from SoCal. <laughs> Shout out San Diego. Broke bitch from SoCal says, just general advice, tis the season of gift giving, but we're all broke as hell. What are some suggestions for nice, not expensive gifts I could get for loved ones in my life? Serious, sarcastic, funny answers would be appreciated. Okay. So here's here's what I do now yep. because I'm older and a lot of people in my family are older. So I go by the rule of if the kids still believe in Santa, then get them gifts. When it comes to like the adults, the grownups, everything, I literally will just either go out to dinner and pay for it or be like, hey, what do you want to do? Let's go to the movies. It's just like an experience instead of a thing. Because we're all grown up, I have everything I want. Yeah, I mean, unless you're unless you're coming in here with like some serious, like, unless you're loaded and you're gonna you're popping in with like a big ass TV or a car, so that's please do that. But like on a budget, it's like why not all get together and just everyone bring something and just eat and chill and have fun and take pictures and have the memories and, and stuff like that. That's what I that's what I personally do. And then if you happen to be out and see something little or silly that you want to grab somebody, like just get it but i think i the route that i i prefer to go on the holidays and i've been doing this with my whole family for years is we all just get together we started doing um like a little what's it called like a yankee swap type thing oh, okay that's good, we, yeah. the last two years we all got scratch tickets so we all just handed each other the same scratch tickets. did anyone win anything like, no well no when we got a bunch of i think i got like 50 dollars with the scratch tickets and i okay. brought, brought them and everyone just kind of picked we put them all in a bucket and everyone picked five or I forget how we did it. But they, uh, yeah, no, we really won. The year before, somebody did win like uh, 500 bucks or something. Damn. But yeah, last year, like not, we all just kind of won like $5, whatever here and there. Yeah. But it was fun because we all get to, like, again, it was an experience. Yeah, you know? everyone getting together. It would have been, been fine without that too because we all just chilled and played games and, and ate and watched TV. Because Christmas Eve is when my family celebrates Christmas. We have everyone come over then. And then Christmas yep. Day, we kind of just like chill and don't do anything. Nice. I am the same way. I much prefer experiences over actual gifts. So mm -hmm. like I, you know, especially as an like you said, I got all the things I need. And if I don't have it, I would rather get it myself because I just don't trust other people to get me the things that I want, how I want <laughs> them, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> And I don't want to have to go return something. Yeah. Like I don't want to have to go there to customer service. And it is, and it is to just hand someone money but for some reason handing somebody like a ten dollar scratch ticket isn't gonna feel as bad yeah but for the kids i go even if i'm broke i'm gonna i go all out for the kids i'll spend more than i like oh, i'm yeah. like i'm only gonna get them one thing but for my nieces and nephews and stuff i'm like everything what do you want the kids Make deserve it yeah what, what, what are you but, what are you yeah. feeling i for my friends will do like you know i guess what people call like stocking stuffers like little things that i think are silly and funny yeah um stuff it stocking stuffers or like little bracelets for my friends nothing too crazy but yeah i mostly will do like just have a big game night and then my big pull for my friends is i'll just make coquito because i can make a big batch of it and bottle it mm -hmm. and then give it to everyone as a gift and that's I'm like good your gift is taken care of i gave you liquor good luck um right so that's what i do but as far as some funny answers let's see honestly you should just get all what your friends sex toys what were those? I was gonna say, what were those? None of the bracelets used to make each other, and I don't know how old you are. In school, with like the the gimp bracelets, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, like the thing. The um, we should make cock rings though, cock rings, and hang get little like little like charms, like a uh, oh, like the bracelets that all the the white soccer moms wear with the charms. Mm -hmm, Do mm -hmm. that for a cock ring. That'd be cute, and then you could buy little charms for your cock ring. Honestly, mm -hmm. yeah, a little popper charm, a little popper <laughs> charm. <laughs> You need to go to Tiffany and get like a hand, like like a custom cock ring size. Like yeah. when they ask you what size, you you really gotta you know get the circumference. Yeah. You know, get, let your friends know the, the ring measurer thing. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you you know like I'm a size eleven. You know, <laughs> then he went to he went to Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Every kiss begins with K. You know, <laughs> get him a little the job I work a on. little ketamine <laughs> charm. You know, for the gotta be cute. Those little spoons that you see everywhere. Uh huh. Yeah, like a little spoon for the girls. It could be cute. Um, in the chat, they say do a secret Santa with your friends and make the budget twenty or thirty bucks. That's always a good one. Yeah, yeah. And then you know yeah. the thing. Everyone, everyone gets each other booze. Yeah. Everyone, I don't. Everyone has drinks. That's what's gonna happen. Everyone's yeah. gonna bring a bottle, and they're all gonna pass the bottle to each other. It's easy. Or if you do have a potluck, go to Costco. Um, you know, I am Costco's biggest warrior. If Costco has zero fans, I am dead. Um, go to Costco and get the big ass pumpkin pie for $5 to fulfill your potluck requirement. 
That way everybody uh, can get a piece. It's huge. You can cut like 30 fucking pieces out that bitch. Um, and then I make this thing for all the, for the holidays. That's um, it's, it's supposed to be bacon wrapped from watermelon rind, which is super duper sweet. And you just like cut the bacon and half, wrap it around the toothpick and bake it in the oven. But watermelon rind is hard to find. So you can use pineapple. People think it sounds gross. And they go like that. And it's super duper cheap. You can make a giant thing. Too. So good. So when you like for the pineapple rind, do you like shave off? Cause you know, they've got the, like, like the sticky so, bits at the end. So, do you like cut that off? So, so. The pineapple, we don't do, for pineapple, you just use pineapple cube. But oh, okay. for the watermelon gotcha. rind, you get it, pick, it's pickled. It comes in a big jar. It's pickled watermelon rind. Gotcha. So it's already all done and like nice and sweet. And you just wrap it okay. in the bacon and cool. throw it in the oven. I've never heard about Delicious. that. Delicious. How much, you think, Delicious. you think I could pickle my own watermelon rinds? You can pickle whatever you want, daddy. I think this is the year of pickling. I'm I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to claim it now. I love pickles. If you look at my TikTok uh, uh, thing, it says "pickle aficionado" is my is my title. <laughs> well, for twenty twenty four, if I start pickling my own watermelon rinds, I'm gonna drop you off some because oh please, do anything you pick. I love honestly love anything pickled. I think love, love, I love. think this is my year. You know, I, I I make kombucha every once in a while, but I think this year I'm a, I'm gonna swap to pickling things. I'm gonna make some pickles, sure. pickle some uh some onions. I love a pickled onion. Pickled garlic's really good, mm-hmm. uh, and now I'm gonna add watermelon rinds to it. Do that's it. a gift G- give the girls I pickles <laughs> i can't find them anywhere i have to order them from like overseas and stuff you, they used to be at like the grocery stores and they're not anymore because they're expensive okay that and makes people sense. don't really buy them so i think they just don't go bad what? but yeah please do i will buy tons of pickled watermelon rind off you see look and that's that's the best gift you can give the girls is pickle watermelon rind for everybody this year <laughs> Make it yourself. That's what I've been asking for. Yeah. Pickling, I think, only takes a couple, like a week or two. So if you you if you start now, you can have it done in time for Christmas. Yeah. Christmas, I think you're a little late for Hanukkah because I think Hanukkah is like what in like a week. I don't know when is Hanukkah. I don't know. I haven't celebrated. Bro, I don't know me either. Anyway, if you celebrate Hanukkah, and it's it's a little early. Uh, happy Hanukkah. Uh, <laughs> Other gifts you can give the girls, you know, a charm bracelet. If you bring back phone charms, get them a phone case and add a charm onto that. Just charm everything. Oh my God. Just put charm, char- charm and pickle. Charms, charm and pickle. pickles. You know what? I yeah. actually think I think you should bring Tamagotchis back and give all your friends Tamagotchis. Give them the gift of a child. When I was a kid. I got two of them sitting right there. They're staring me in the eyes. That's why I said it. They they used to make Looney Tune ones too, but for a little bit they would they Tamagotchi and everything. Oh, and yeah. I used to have a, and I and it would every time you'd redo it, it might be a different Looney Tune in the end. And I never got Taz and I wanted Taz. I oh, had a Digimon one, but the gag is is that I was a Pokemon kid and I still am. So I don't know a single Digimon. So I just kept getting these random little monsters. And I was like, oh, this one's kind of cute, <laughs> I think. Uh, but yeah, bring back Tamagotchis because if you really, you know, a Tamagotchi is great. It's something to care for. If your friends uh, you know, are feeling a little lonely this holiday season, they'll have their Tamagotchi. Boom. You're giving them the gift of companionship. That's what they really want. I think the new ones come in color too, if you want to. And it's cheaper than a hooker. It's 300 bucks an hour to hire me. See? When you could just get a Tamagotchi. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to mess. I don't want to mess with your bag, though. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to mess with the bag. You know what? What you really should get your friends, get them a session with Bobby Knight. <laughs> yeah, or subscribe to my OnlyFans, please. For yeah. the love of God. Mm-hmm. Um, what if someone booked you for a session and they just wanted to talk the entire time? Does that ever happen? That happens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just conversation ones for sure. Cute. I've had dudes just take me out on dates to concerts, like stuff like that. Yeah, nice. those are the best ones. Because <laughs> that's like I feel and far between though. As much as people at my bar go to like get dances and things from dancers, I feel like most of what they want is just someone to talk to. Um, yeah. So yeah, if if your friends, the time it's it's not even penetrative sex that they want. Yeah. If they, if anything, it ends up just being oral and, and like honestly, they just want to hang out most of the time, See? which is chill. But the thing about that is they'll take up the whole entire. So if they want you for an hour, you're there. You can't leave a minute early. Yeah. If it's if it's sex, then you can get them off and get <laughs> Like all right, there. Ten minutes in. Right, whew, that was that was cool. All right, I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I when when I was doing it in college, it was mostly that no one was ever really there to talk. So I, I was. Oh, she went to college. Uh, We're gonna brag about going to college well, now. Well, that's how I paid for it. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, get your friends some good gifts. Get them some bad gifts. 
uh, just get everyone cold. You know what? If, if if you're a homosexual, you know all your friends been bad as hell. Get them bad. all cold. I think um, what Sour Patch Kids makes they have a coal. It's just like it's just blue raspberry. But it looks like little coal. Ooh, wait, that's that sounds delicious. Actually. That's like a, a buck fifty at Target. Boom. There you go. They were delicious. I ate the whole box. All right, well I'm about to go get me some tomorrow. <laughs> uh, let's move on to this next one. This is from Jordy Massive, and it is a confession question mark. <laughs> confession yeah. kind of i don't know and it's not really a confession uh -huh. they just ask do you like to play pool <laughs> and i know why <laughs> oh see this is why i was like there's something behind this that i am not i'm not clued into so ironically so that's jordy massive he's also uh another porn actor okay. and he um ironically i grew up with a pool table in my house so i'm actually very good at pool okay. but there was a time during pig week in fort lauderdale when I may or may not have done some questionable things on a pool table at a nightclub. Oh, all right. <laughs> with my clothes off. <laughs> so that's why he asked that question. Yeah, we got a, we had a, we had a couple drinks and we went um, somewhere and it was one of those like cruisy bars and there was, you know, I don't know why they even have a pool. I guess people play pool during the day, but at night it's like a cruise, like people just cruise around it. Yeah. And I might have used that as a, as like a faux sex. Wait, gotcha, you know. gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> you know, honestly, this I sounds. I pulled it under the pockets. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a video yesterday of someone. Uh, the whole cue ball went right at her pussy. Oh, was it the one where she pushes them all out? No, I didn't see that. But somebody was what? was hitting them in, and it went. It went right in. There's one. There's this one's old because this is from when I was in like middle school. I remember seeing it, so it's probably you know gone forever. But I remember watching it, and this woman pushed out all the cue balls out of her. Then after they were all out, an orange, and I was like, it always confused me. I was like, was the all the balls out enough to why the orange? And she put the orange in first, obviously because it came out. I always had so many questions. I had so many questions. Okay, the people in the chat are saying that they've seen it, so you, you're not alone. I have not seen this one. The one that I yeah, saw yesterday was somebody, uh, you know, teeing up. They the, the uh, what's it, what's it, they wax the. The, the stick, see, this is how much I play for yeah. <laughs> The chalk? Yeah. They just, so yeah. Shut, the shut, shut up. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you see, this is how good I am at sports. I'm like, they, they waxed it up. They <laughs> they hit the ball and it went straight <laughs> in. Touchdown. Yeah. yeah, touchdown. Boom, boom, boom. I am not good at pool at all unless I am trashed. Then I think all the latent geometry comes out of the back of my brain. <laughs> Maybe. You just think you're good at stuff when you're drunk. That's how it works. No, or maybe everyone else. Are you actually winning? Yes, that's the that's thing. Is like, is I'm winning, but then, <laughs> but then I wonder, I wonder if if everyone else is just getting drunk as well and they're getting worse. So by comparison, right. I seem better. Um, I always pretend I don't know how to play. I grew up with a pool table and a pinball machine in my in my house, so I always um I'll pretend I don't know how to play, and then I'll just at the last minute I'll be like, oh, whoops, I won. Oh, so you're a pool shark. I thought I made a lot of money. I made a lot of money when I was like 15, 16 years old. I used to go to this pool hall in Boston called Legendary. It's gone. And uh, this is back when, you know, we'd all, all, we'd all be trying to get drunk or high. So I'd go and I'd, I'd bustle and I'd, I'd make like tw 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. And we're going to buy an eighth. Oh, okay. So you, you're you a pool <laughs> shark. Let, let it be known. Bobby was, <laughs> don't, don't play pool with Bobby. Don't put money on it, at least. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, the, what you were saying earlier about, uh, doing questionable things on a pool table reminds me of a lovely bar in Philly. Shout out to the bike stop. <laughs> they have pool tables where people are oh, also I, doing questionable things on like, occasionally. I love Philly. Yeah. 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 Have you ever been to the bike stop? Oh yeah. But I love I used to feel when I was in Boston, I would do like New York, Philly, DC. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Often I'd drive. Yeah. And I've actually never been to Boston, but I would also frequent DC, Philly, New York. Those are like the mm -hmm. three cities that I would hit up. Um Except the last time I was in DC, I fucked up my car. So rest, rest in peace to her. <laughs> no, I'm selling my car. You want it? Uh, no, because now I have an, another car that I am very close to selling because I really, I never use truly it. only use yeah. it if I'm going to, to the groceries? spa or to go get groceries. Oh, yeah, same. Yeah, because by the spa you mean Steamworks? No, I go to uh, um, King Spa out in Niles. It's really nice. Um, because I feel like oh, like a real spa? a legit spa, yeah, it's a Korean spa. Oh, uh, if I if if not there, I'm going to um, the Russian spa in Wicker, also really nice. 
Just because I'm like people say the names of cities here, and I'm like, mm-hmm. listen, I, I know. I still, I still only know this. I've only been here for not even a year, so I still only know like here. I've been here three years now, and I don't know a single town outside of Illinois aside from Niles because that's where the spa is, and Schaumburg <laughs> because there's a mall out there, and a lot of people are from Schaumburg. That's all I know. I need to go to a mall. We'll have to talk about that later. Well, there's there's one in Schaumburg. Well, I guess there's also the uh, Block 37 downtown. That's a, that's a nice little mall. They, oh, bring me to that. They, bring me to the bring me to the malls, please. They got some, what, what what do you need at the mall? Is the question. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't ever need anything at the mall. I just that's enjoy true. going and buying. That's fair. <laughs> I went. I went. When did I go? I went two days ago. I went down to Primark. If you've never been to Primark, also once again, I'm not Primark. being paid to say this. Primark's great. I went to Primark because we have them in Boston too. Primark. I think there's only like there's like four in the country, right? It's like yeah, there's two and there's two of them are in Boston. And one of them's in Philly, and the one of them's here. So I think that's uh, <laughs> I think that's it. I love. It, it is kind of like one one use clothing, which we shouldn't be supporting. Yeah. But hey, <laughs> you know, but when it works, it works. Um. um I was there and then I went to Akira because I was trying to uh, find a f- cute little fishnet thing for this um, this concert rave techno thing that I'm going to on Friday. Uh, and I could not find anything that didn't have a rhinestone on it, which shouldn't have surprised me because Akira is mostly feminine clothing. But I was like, gotta just get a little fishnet. In the end, I ended up cutting up a pair of legging fishnets and just, you know, putting it over yeah. Top, like here. Well, you just go to go to uh, down to what's it called in the corner and get one of those leg avenue things. It's like ten bucks, and you can just cut off. You can get a whole fish in a bodysuit. A whole body. Off. I'll see. Yeah, they're like and they're like ten twenty bucks by leg avenue. Yeah. This is what I, as I used to. I have like so many of them because when I was lazy and drag, I would just do shaper bra corset fish in a bodysuit wig like <laughs> easy. And it's always a serve because as long as you as long as you're padded right, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I ended up fixing it. I just did the legging thing, and it looks it was pretty good because I'm I. Yeah. So I'm dip dyeing, a, I like bleach dyed a shirt so that it's that. And then under that is the fishnets for the illusion of a fishnet sleeve. Um, and then, you know, it goes down to where the pants are. So it's it's kind of cute. Uh, how do we get from pool all the way to fishnets? That is the real question here. <laughs> That's usually, I mean, everything usually ends with fishnets, I think. It all comes back to fishnets. And speaking of fishnets, this next question is about cum dumps. Like... <laughs> It is actually. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> Do you want? Would you like to read it? <laughs> yeah, I think I've read over this. That's hilarious. Okay. <clears throat> Alex has a confession, and they write, "I want to be in a relationship, but lately I just fantasize with being the third in an open relationship or being a cum dump." And here's what we'll I'm, here's it. what I want to say. Exactly. What is stopping you from doing actually all three of these things? Yeah, you could them, you really. could be in a relationship. You could be the third in an open relationship, and you could be a cum dump yeah. all in one day if you were really, really budgeting your time correctly. I guess it's like, what is it that you're missing that you think you're going to get from a relationship? That right? was going to be and the next you, thing, and then you go from then you go from there. Is it are you lonely and never get in a relationship just because you're lonely either? Because go make a friend or get a hobby or read a book or something yeah, like that but join like a club. what do you think you're missing it's yeah but also it's around the holidays and everyone feels like you're in some kind of way yeah trust me once it starts getting nice again you're gonna you're just gonna go back to i want to be in a come down yeah right there, you want to <laughs> yeah the, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the wet especially in chicago it's cold it's rainy it's ugly right now don't let mm-hmm. that fool you if you don't, don't love you, <laughs> don't let it fool you. If you want to be a cum dumb, do that. There's indoor places you could do that. Hop on Sniffies, find it. You want to be a third in yeah. an open relationship, you could find that. The hardest thing, that, like any day of the week here. Yeah, l- truly, the hardest thing to find out of these three things is probably the relationship. And then the the, the reason really is why do you want to be in one? Um, mm-hmm. So if you get to the bottom, well, what do you think? Or what do you miss? Not even what do you want to be in one. What do you feel like you're missing that makes you want to be in one? Yeah, because it might not even be that at all. It could be something completely else. And then it, you know, you could your friend your friend could be in a really good relationship, so you envy something that they have in that one. You could just find that also in like a friend or something yeah, too. Yeah, you can just find a good Judy. Or to just be jerk around. off, jerk off your horny jerk off. Listen, and around. yeah, <laughs> the post nut clarity will hit you, and you'll realize actually I'm good. I'm good on that. Oh I'm going to put on a little anime. 
I'm fine. <laughs> it's great. For real. They said in the chat, get a heated weighted Here's blanket. Someone. Yeah, get a weighted blanket. Get a heated blanket. What you really need is heated warm. Blankets are the ticket. Go, go to Primark and get you the little Naruto. Stop sending people to Primark. Listen, I can't help it. That Naruto hooded. The, the, are you kidding us? No, but <laughs> that that hooded throw blanket is gorgeous. Well, it's very comfy. When I tell you I sat in it all day yesterday, I was editing in oh it. Oh my god, that's, that's what you got up from Primark? Yep. That is cute. I was editing in it, I was cooking in it, I was playing games in it. Like that that did not leave my body yesterday. Um Is it a it's it, that's a like a hooded blanket or it's a It's onesie? a hooded blanket. That's cute. It's, the onesie thing is this. The onesie bar crawl is this Saturday. I'm, I got a Batman onesie. Oh shit! Because I'm gonna be bartending. Oh, okay. I'm not working until night. I, I'll miss. I'll miss the brunt of it. Yeah, it's turn, I'm doing the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Anytime there's like one of those bar crawls on like a Sunday, oh, I was like, all right, just put these elbows up. I love. Put, put the grease work in. I love in. them because because they're always on like a, a. There's that one person running it who's always like, all right, we gotta go. Yeah. And they leave and it's like. I'm money and now they're gone perfect it's my my yeah. favorite thing because they always come in they get a couple drinks they tip the dancers and then they're they're mm -hmm. gone as quick as they came in it's perfect yeah yeah but it's crazy while they're there and you're running you're spinning in circles but oh my god i had one saturday night and i knew i should have known it was going to be a mess when i came in because i was biking because i biked to work and i passed by a, a white trolley and all i heard was caucasian people screaming inside so I get to. You mean the trolley was white, or was the trolley full of white? Both, <laughs> both actually. <laughs> so I I get to work, I clock in, and sure enough, I hear the trolley stop outside the bar, and just like some, the SpongeBob, uh, the anchovy <laughs> episode where all the anchovies yeah. hopped off the bus, it was that, but with straight people. So when I tell you the, the bar was flooded with straights that came in and kept trying to sneak in bush lights into the bar that I had to keep throwing people out, throwing drinks oh. out. It was a mess, but I made my money. You know, you know where I work and there's a drag bar next to it and, and I will get the overflow of, of the, of the drunk women. Oh God. And most 90% of the time they're respectful. I did drag for a long time. So I know how to handle them. 10% mm -hmm. of the time they, I, you would think that they own stock in the bar. I'm like, what is happening right now? God, what is happening? Damn. Right now? Don't yell at me. Yeah. <laughs> like, and the thing is, is like, I know a lot of bartenders that love to yell back at customers. That's not me. I can't, I nice cannot do it. I, I it, it takes me, I don't do it right away. But yeah. You really got it. You've got it. I, in my mind. I'm like, maybe they were just being loud because I, I give them two after, after two times in my mind then I'm like, you don't, I promise you don't want it with me. Like yeah. I promise. I promise. My I like right away. I'm like, get out, get out. I do a finger. And then if they, <laughs> if they continue. Or if they try whistling at me, I go, I'm not a dog. Oh. Go to the or other slapping the bar. Uh -huh. Go to the other bar. There's other bartenders. There's a couple other here. And if if it gets uh -huh. to that point, then it's like, all right, I'm not serving you, get out. But I will not the bottle I, opener, bottle opener on the shaker. Ding 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 uh, ding security. Yeah. <laughs> security, security. <laughs> we got a complicated order. Um <laughs> but back to this come dump. You gotta fill yeah, you, just you gotta fill your winter by filling your hole. And I think that's mm -hmm. what it really comes down to. When this like like you said earlier, when the springtime hits, you're gonna realize I don't want this shit. You don't want the relationship. It's like when people got a dog during the pandemic. You didn't want a dog. Yeah. And then the pandemic's over and they're all turning their dogs in. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't want a man. Yeah, you don't. You just want to feel a man within you. Yes. And you can do that anytime you want. Mm -hmm. And you can also find a man without necessarily you know, a fuck buddy. Yeah, you can find someone that you can yeah. get that closeness, that closeness with, without being exclusive, without tying yourself down. You can find companionship yeah. to get you through the winter without necessarily ending up in a full relationship. So, either way, I think you'll be all right. Let us know how the come dump goes. Very anti relationship. No, <laughs> like, listen. Don't, don't get into relationships. <laughs> I love relationships. I'm in one. <laughs> I Same. love it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know by the way we're talking. But but, but the thing <laughs> is, is like when when I met him, I I've never been someone who's like I want a relationship. I want a relationship. If I end up with someone and we're vibing and that happens, you know, perfect, great, love it. But I'm never. I've never been someone who's been like, oh God, I really wish I had a relationship right now. I really wish I had a boyfriend, blah, 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 blah. I've Me all, either. Yeah. And then I went on a show about it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>
I was like, all right, sure, maybe this will be different. <laughs> I love my alone time. And then, you know, I found someone who was really good. And then I started liking our together time. And then we both like our alone time. So it's great, you know? Mm-hmm. So you really got to find someone who, who matches your wavelength. Um, I have a friend who, who's who been with their partner for like, like over 10 years. And they have they literally have a two-bedroom. Like, they each have their own bedroom. Right. Nothing's wrong. Sometimes they'll sleep in each other, but they have like a two bedroom apartment. That sounds cute. So you would think they're roommates. They're, not. they're, like, they're like, I want my room. I want my room. Yeah. But, and then and you, everything's you, great. You can have a little sleepover <laughs> whenever you want. You, yeah. Right. It's cute. Knock on the wall. Yeah. You like bring, you bring your blanket over. You're like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bad dream. You have your yeah. I threw up. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know when you're like, like when you're like a kid you're like mom i threw up <laughs> my mother would be like good clean it yeah or you know <laughs> here's the thing you can find a relationship with someone else who also wants to be a cum dump and then you are the two bottom relationship <laughs> but then listen and here's where that goes wrong because one of you is going to be a greedier bottom than the other Ooh. and trust me if someone starts it on me first and they try to finish it in you, I will push them out of you and back into bed. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, maybe that's not a good idea. Well, I mean, hey, everyone's different. I'm just insatiable. Unless you find someone who's equally as greedy. That could work. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, this next, enough, enough about the greediness of a whole and now about greediness of the heart because this next question <laughs> is about happiness. It's from T, uh, TG. It's a general advice question. There, how would you define happiness? This is one of those existential. Uh, we'll never yeah. get the real answer, but you know, we can we can try. It's giving like, what's the meaning of the universe? Yeah. I don't know. Everyone's everyone's definition of happiness is different. That's basically you know? what it comes down to. Like I, like, could, if I you think about it, somebody's definition of happiness could be like someone else's no trauma you know <laughs> like yeah like there's no more cats on the planet or something you know mm-hmm. one man's happiness is another man's trash i think i think that's the saying right, right? yeah that, that's how it goes. Sure. yeah yeah uh i'm usually the one that's called trash yeah <laughs> how would well let's let's do it this way then how would you define happiness for yourself then so mine's weird and it's going to be weird and i know and every time i think it or say it and i started just saying the truth instead of sugarcoating or trying to sound no, no, good no, no, anyways, no, like yeah. my idea of happiness is fi- being very financially stable, like having money because I grew up without it. And it's always been something like a lot of people I know, they don't know. Like I was told that I w- we were poor when we were young. I was told you can't have that because you don't have money. So money was always something I thought about from the time I knew what money was. Whereas like my nieces and nephews now don't understand what money is or how it works. Yeah. Like they don't, they don't know. So my happiness is stability and to have stability means money. So that's why I'm always working. I always have money saved. I'm always good with my money. I know like, I have to be involved in it, whether it's a business deal, like I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So my happiness means financial stability, which means that I can like pay a bill for my mom or, or get something from my friend. And that gives me happiness, which when I tell people that with money, they think it's like greediness, but it's not. It's like, I feel like that that's safety. Money is safety yes. because it is. So my happiness is having enough money to make sure everyone is not going to be hungry and homeless. Like yes, that's my, 100%. I'm not saying I want to be filled. I do want to be filthy rich, but it's like, I know I don't need a billion dollars, but like having enough money to make sure that if something, if something is needed or something happens mm-hmm. that I got, it. have a little nest that's egg and be comfortable, mm-hmm. afford yourself the things that you want to do without having to like worry right. about it. Like the, yeah. A lot of people say, you know, you can't buy money. You can't buy happiness with money, blah, blah, blah. They're wrong. Okay. Those type of people yeah, have absolutely. never had to, uh, <laughs> they've never had to be cognizant of how much money they have. Um, they've right. never lived paycheck to paycheck. They've never been working more than mm-hmm. more than one job at a time. You know, yeah. don't listen to those or, people. Or, having no, or not having lights on or food or like yeah. a place to sleep. And like, mm-hmm. that's what I mean. Like fine, when a kid doesn't know what money is or how it works, I love that. Yeah. Because I'm like, they're not worried. Like I was five, six years old, like, all I could think about was we need money, like you know. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 not uh, it's not a great thing to say, but like money is for me. I don't think it's a bad stability. thing to say though. I think it's right. it's just perfectly valid, and I think the people that don't understand it probably haven't had to think about it. Um, but the yeah. truth is, is like it that could hit any of us at any time, and we could be you know mm-hmm. we could have so much money today, and then tomorrow boom you're flat broke, and then you have to really start thinking about money. So. You know, it's something one of those things that a lot of people take for granted. So I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking that. I was thinking about that earlier. Like all the people that are filthy, filthy rich. Has there ever been somebody like a big, big rich that has lost everything and had to go to like working, at, you know, like a minimum wage job? Like 
you never hear like yeah. like Kyle Richards from the Real Housewives. I don't know Real Housewives. Like uh, what if be what if Beyonce lost everything like for real, real? Like she for some reason didn't invest anything. Like has that ever happened to somebody where they've been like huge, famous, I'm rich, and sure lost everything? It has. It has to. I'm like there's I'm, at the very I wanna, least. I want to watch a movie about that. I want to watch a movie. There's about definitely that. people who like make bad stock investments and like. Or like they, mm-hmm. they're really on the up and up and they have a, a ton of money and then they lose it all and then they're down in the dumps. But I don't like I'm but thinking see, people that, that we people, talk about like famous, famous. I'm trying to think about one of those. You see people like that, though, that are famous and they make bad decisions or they get canceled. It's like their version of broke is in broke because yeah. they, still, they still have, you know, they own 19 properties or, or a basketball team or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. So like when those people are broke, they're never really down and out. They're just they're broke is like still rich that, to, that, to people like us. that's what i'm thinking i'm like i feel like anyone that has fallen that far from a grace like that is probably not famous well, in the way that we would think but they're just like really right. rich stock wise or business like yeah yeah ceos yeah. yeah those are probably the people that like threw themselves off the building during the stock market yes stock market like those yeah. kind of people yeah like who like truly have lost yeah. everything um mm-hmm. which shit uh how would i define happiness anyway hmm. My my happiness is is not jumping when the stock market crashes. Exactly. You know what? Hey, that's my <laughs> happiness too. Yeah. Why not? Uh, happiness for me is well, definitely part of it is money and being comfortable because I've definitely, uh, a, you know, I've been at points where I've been paycheck to paycheck and even less than that. I've you know been to the food pantries to get dollars mm-hmm. to get food. So money definitely is part of it. I think the biggest part of it for me is as much as I love my alone time, <laughs> happiness for me, I find uh, is best enjoyed when I'm with people that I like. I'm with my friends. I'm with my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I'm spending time with people. Like, like quality time is when I feel the most happiness. Uh, and it doesn't have to be spending money. It doesn't have to be, you know, it could be a walk. It could be, uh, you know, literally a walk down the street walk around the corner it could be just home playing Mm -hmm. games it could be anything happiness for me is not defined by like the big strokes but happiness for me is definitely like the little things uh that just make you smile like you know a text that you get from a friend um like a dumb little meme people who send me 20 tiktoks they know they know (laughs) who they are me and my friends (laughs) (laughs) If if you send me 20 tiktoks you know exactly who you are uh like things like that like the little things and i think you know it's important to remind yourself of those little things when you're when you're not feeling necessarily happy with all the Mm -hmm. big things i think remembering those tiny moments can help you kind of get through because you know life might not be the best right now but that doesn't mean you know you always got little reasons to smile why not i thought you were gonna say primark you know primark is my happiness let's let's (laughs) let's wake it up wake it up primark is my happiness Going and being able to get a little tank top for four dollars, that is my happiness. <laughs> Getting my Naruto in my Naruto throw blanket. <laughs> that's really that's my that's where my happiness is. Yeah. Um and you know what? What really my you know, old RPGs, Final Fantasy Six, 1990s, like <laughs> Final Fantasies five, six, tactics, nine. Th- that's my happiness. Really old video games. I love that. You said they were old. <laughs> well, listen. Atari is just not. It's just not the T. It, it's the little two. I'm not that old, bitch. Okay. I'm well, you, well, listen. Well, that <laughs> Final Fantasy VI is little pixels. It's not Atari though. <laughs> <laughs> Blink One Two was playing the other day, and it was someone who, like uh, posted something that was on TikTok, I think, and they were like, "Oh, listening to this like uh, classic rock or something." I was like, "I'm all right." Is that considered? Is that considered classic rock? It was like, like, oh no, it wasn't like it was Sugar Ray, and I was like, I don't think that's rock or classic. Yeah, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't, you know, Sugar Ray. You know, back in the day Everyone. when I didn't know what ska was, I used to just call it white boy reggae, which <laughs> isn't necessarily wrong because that's kind of what ska For is. Real. It's white boy reggae with a with a trumpet. Uh, <laughs> if your happiness is Sugar Ray, write in because I have questions for you. <laughs> Oh my god! Someone's a huge fan in the chat, and they're pissed. Yeah, they're like, "How dare you?" <laughs> I'm gonna. That's when they start. They tried canceling me over Sugar Ray. <laughs> that's that's what took me. If Sugar Ray is what takes me down, then then so good. be it. Okay, <laughs> I'll say Sugar Ray was great when they were in the Scooby Doo movie, <laughs> and I'll end. Oh, the Scooby Doo movie. And that's my happiness. The Scooby Doo movie. Freddie 
Freddie Prince Jr. is my happiness. Uh, he was so. I had a crush on truly everybody in that film. I know, even Shaggy. What was his name? Uh, um, Matt L- L- Lillard. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew Lillard. Lillard. Between him, Freddie Prince Jr., Sarah Michelle Gellar, Linda Cardellini. Where's my, I have my, where's my, my Scooby Doo tattoo. <gasps> oh, I love. Come on, Daphne. Oh. Truly, everybody in that film, fine as hell. And they've all mm-hmm. been aging very nicely, too. Good for them. Money will do that. See? Money, money, money happy will see. <laughs> there it is. Write in. Let us know what your happiness is. I'm curious. TG, let me know what your happiness is. Matthew Lillard was hot movie. in SLP Punk end of list. Yes. That was when he had, yeah. that's when he had the, yeah. uh, the frosted tips, right? Yeah, yeah, I had frosted tips. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I used to have just my bangs. I had just, ba- I had my head shaved, just bangs, and they okay. were bleach blonde. Wait, that's kind of cut. And I got pussy. That's kind of cut. I'm like, that's kind of cut. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bang. Yeah, it's a quick clip on. Yeah. <laughs> Did you should like brush it? Like, all right, we got the bangs. No, set. I would leave it. No, so I would. I uh, people would like. You would think I would like spike it up or something. I would just like spray hairspray in it and go like this, and then leave the house with a bleach bang. And no Lord. one was like, "Hey, maybe don't do that." <laughs> you know what? That br- that's that's what real happiness is. Bring back just the bang. Just like the late nineties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Um, all right, we're gonna do. We're already at an hour. You know what? I'm gonna actually gonna save the baddest butch queen. We're gonna save this one. Okay. I don't know. Give it a once over. Do you want can, do you want to do it or should we just go to the next segment? Um, if it's really speaking I mean, to you, we can, but I'm fine putting it to next month. I'm looking. I'm looking. I mean, we can just go to the oh, we can do the if you want to do the OnlyFans one, let's do that one, actually. Oh, okay. That's the the Edmund one. Yeah. Okay, see, so this one. I was reading it and didn't make too much sense to me. I know, I know what I know what they mean. Okay, great, perfect. Then um, I'll read it. This is from Edmund Doan's okay. general advice question. There, OnlyFans has evolved into a billion-dollar company with only twenty to thirty employees, but they changed their policy in a growing fear on moving to another platform. How it has affected me and other creators, and what to do for future creators. So give us give us the skinny on this. So here's the thing. So OnlyFans before didn't used to have a lot of rules and regs, especially during the pandemic when they blew up because of us, because of people like us. And what ended up happening was, who was that bitch who went on and she like scammed everybody, basically, uh, Bella Thorne? Yes. She got all these people to subscribe for all this money and she didn't promise on what she was doing. So when she did that, it changed a lot of the rules. Like, so for example, I have OnlyFans, Just for Fans, Rafa Club, like I put it on everything. On OnlyFans is the most vanilla of my stuff. Gotcha. They specifically target queer people, queer male presenting people mostly, right? Because if it's a if it's straight porn, they really don't care. Lesbian porn, they don't care. Big titties, whatever. But like, for example, I can't put a water sports video on OnlyFans. I have to put that on Just for Friends or Outback Club. I can't fist. I can't do anything that's considered hardcore sex, which in their eyes is is if I'm just fucking too hard, it's hardcore. Sex. Wow. So they can pull whatever they want and strike you and do whatever. And they change their rules and the way they pay out and they put caps on how much people can tip us. So it used to be anyone could just tip whatever they wanted. And then after what she did, they put a lot of caps on, they give people strikes, they can delete your account without saying, oh, they can just delete it. That's it. And if you have money in the bank on there, because I cash out every time I hit somebody because of this. Yeah. So I'm constantly just cashing it out. Some people would leave their money and I don't know why, maybe to push it to next year's taxes. Or to be in that high percentage because they, you know, it's like whatever percent of creators, yes. which means nothing to anybody, but they did it to make people keep money in their bank, which helps them collect interest, which is smart. And that's like when you reload your Dunkin' Donuts app or Starbucks and the money's in there, they're making money off your money. Gotcha, that's gotcha. what they want you to do it all the time. Oh, okay. So now what happens is if they decide that they want to close your account, they can find something to close it for, especially people who have a lot of money in there. If you get five, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 grand in there and you're leaving it for whatever stupid reason, which is dumb to begin with. They could just be like, you violated this thing. It could be a post from when you started years ago. And they could just keep all your fucking money like that because that's what you signed Damn, up for. So then you're locked so out the of thing all with that. OnlyFans, The thing with OnlyFans is like, keep it as long as you can keep it because it's the most known interface and the most user-friendly to people. Because uh, let's be honest, most of the people that are paying and jerking off are older. They don't know how to what they're doing. Making them sign up for something like many vids, or just for fans, or Rafa Club. It's another thing to do. It's another sign up to do. And a lot of people don't want to do it. They want the mm-hmm. one where everything is centralized. So what they're saying is the fear 
of that are moving to a new platform. It's like, you got to just do it. You got to just start an, an, another one because eventually they will kick. They tried to kick us off because they said, because Visa didn't want to be uh, involved with processing money for, for sex, mm. specifically gay sex. And then we all were leaving and going elsewhere. And then they changed their mind real quick because they, that's, they, I don't know what they think goes on in OnlyFans. 5% of it might be comedy and cooking shows and whatever. Everything else is sex. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the fear with going to another platform, it's like you need to do it because if you lose that platform, at least everything is uploaded somewhere else. You can keep promoting and getting people over there. But you have to be ready for it because any anything can stop at any time. Instagram can go away. Oh, yeah. Twitter, Twitter did kind of go away. Mm-hmm. So you have to always have your bases covered and put your stuff in as many places as you can mm-hmm. so that if one goes south, you still you you can try to to re uh, traffic your subscribers and back up your shit on hard drives. I don't know how many oh, times I need to tell people this. Porn, porn, more porn. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a please. USB, whether it's yeah, oh, a drive, yeah. whether it's one of these little, you know, this yeah. this I think can I think this is a five terabyte drive. This see this thing has space on it. Yeah, no matter what, I put everything it on is. Six and then one on, its, on one of those big drives too, just because you got to have that too. You have to have it backed up. Back up. Because you can lose access shit. to anything online mm-hmm. at any point in time. You can lose access to everything online. Your computer could be have a faulty update, then you lose all the stuff on your drive. You got to make sure you have your stuff backed mm-hmm. up. Yeah, and the reason I'm saying is I'll take my, take my own advice because I have lost many a thing, many a thing on a bad update. Um, but yeah, back up your stuff. All, all I ever lost was all my my music from iTunes, but I still had all my CDs. This is back when I saw the big CD book. Uh-uh. So I had to re-upload them all, which sucked. But I remember that, and I can't imagine if I lost all of my content that I had to fly around and make and edit. Oh, I would just stop. I would be like, well, I guess that was a fun run. I'm gonna yeah. do something else. Like there's no there's no coming back from it. Because that's a loss of income at that point. Like. It's, it's a loss yeah. of income, and always, all, and no matter what you do, make sure that you have multiple revenues of income, and that you have might, one might not be as good as the other one, but if you did good here, you can do good other places. So make sure that you, like, if you work at a nightclub and, and you do whatever there, make sure that you always be like, I can do this somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I can host this show somewhere else. I can do this somewhere else. I can sell somewhere else. So you always want to yeah. never, never put everything into one thing. Yeah. Ever, or let someone, or let someone make you feel like putting it stuff other other places makes means that you're less loyal. Or like fuck that. Yeah, that. that's why I love bartending because like really you could take it anywhere. Yeah, you could take it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You'll be all right. Oh, you don't want me here? Cool, I'll go do it on the spike. Yeah, right. truly next door. <laughs> yeah, two doors down, I'll be right there. Especially with any drag performer, don't let a nightclub because I made this mistake. A bunch of us did in Boston. You have to work here, and if you go to this other new night, then you're betraying us, and we gave you your start. Don't ever, 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 ever do that. Go work wherever the money is. They'll get over it. And if they don't get over it, whatever. Do you want to stay working for fifty dollars and everyone else is getting three hundred? Absolutely not. You're gonna look like a fool in the end. Yeah. So. Yeah. You cover know, your bases. Prioritize yourself. Make your money. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, that's great because I did not know much about the OnlyFans stuff. I knew. I remember in 2021. When they were kept threatening to ban all explicit content, and then right. they they That's, yeah that was the beginning of it. Got and that was because of Visa. Okay, uh, or Mastercard or Bolt. Or Gosh, or I remember that, and then I remember how quickly they backtracked on that one. Yeah, they, okay. all of a sudden they were they're worried about processing money through OnlyFans, but they're not worried about Venmo and Cash App being for drug sales. Mm-hmm. Like, Wake it, it up. Together. Get it together. Get it together. Um, oh my God, there was something I was going to say, but I can't remember it. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, if it comes back to me, I'll say it in the next segment. Who knows? Anyways, that will be the end of the stream version. Oh, that's what I was going to say. That's why I stream this, put it on multiple podcasting platforms and on YouTube. Because you never know yeah. if I lose something on one platform, I have it on the other one. You know, you like mm-hmm. that just you know feeds back into itself. Anyways. Any of these sites can close. They, yep. don't, they yes. don't owe us anything. Exactly. They're all private mm-hmm. businesses. If Twitch decides it doesn't, if it's like, hey, I made enough money, buy, they can totally do that. Exactly. So, you know, have your shit on multiple platforms. Um, let me know how it goes, Edmund. Um, and, oh my God, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, that'll bring us to the end of the first segment, the end of the stream. If you want to catch a second segment, make sure you listen to the edited episode. It'll be out on all your podcasting platforms probably at the end of this week. Um, Bobby, before we stop the stream, do you want to let the people know where they can follow you? 
Yep, you can follow me um, on Instagram. It's Bobby two underscores night with a K K and I G H T. Uh, on Twitter, it's Bobby at XXX. That is explicit. You will see wieners and butts on there. And my TikTok is at the Bobby Knight. T H E B O B B Y K N I G H T. Amen. Um, and there's links to everything on all my pages. Yeah, for other stuff I forgot. Link tree, all that, all that bullshit. You know, hit, hit yeah, the link. Go watch, watch for the love of Dilf. It's on, it's on OTV. The whole season streaming and season two starts soon. That's what I was gonna say. Go watch, go watch the love of Dilf. It really is a treat. It's fantastic. Um, it's great. It's a, it's a fun ass time. Uh, we're yeah. <laughs> we're gonna hop into our second segment, advice to the stars, where we give advice to celebrities and talk about some some bullshit there. And if you want to hear that, make sure you listen to the podcast. My name is Jake. You can follow me at Poison Touch Pod, Instagram, TikTok. It's usually where I'm the most active um, because Twitter is a cesspool. And <laughs> uh, make sure you go, you know, review the show, rate, like, subscribe. You've watched on YouTube, all that bullshit. And uh, we'll, we'll catch you next time. Yeah, share it, all that stuff. You know, that little copy link. If you're watching the TikTok, you can hit that little copy link button. You don't even have to send it to nobody. It's free. It's, it's free. free. It pushes it out to more people. That shit's important. Um, but yeah, we're yeah. going to take a break. And uh, we'll catch y'all later. Bye. Bye.